for part two. Oh, so excited. So, um, this is part two of my Teensy 4.0 unboxing slash getting started. I did an overview and unboxing earlier today, which you can find on this same channel. Um, and there's also a link to that in the description of this video. I had to cut that one off because my Teensy Duino install was not working. I realized that that is because I had two separate installs of Arduino, one on the I'm on a Mac, so uh, one in Macintosh HD slash applications, and then one in my personal users um, applications folder, and I had to run the, in the Teensy Duino installer on a different version than the one I was, I'm actually using. So uh, all the instructions are still valid. You can grab the uh, software from this thread, which is linked in the description or you can find it elsewhere on the TNC site. Um, all you gotta do is look for the TNC Duino installer. So uh, in this iteration, I'm gonna go ahead and actually install the software. I have tested this on this other piece, which I forgot to take out of the bag earlier. This is really exciting. You know what this is? This is the audio, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, add-on? that I was talking about earlier, that three years ago we looked at, um, I think Moldover was with us for part of that, uh, and it was like a super, <laughs> it looks like it's from 2016. Anyway, um, but this is with the previous version of the Audio Shield, and now I appear to have this sort of new version of that, which is very exciting. So this looks like the same classic audio shield with perhaps a couple of minor differences. But then also uh, it's got this whole extra breakout, which has a beautiful clear acrylic mounted base plus the little rubber feet, which is amazing. This looks so nice. Um, and this is a breakout that appears to be specifically for the TNC 4.0 because it's got some things like the coin cell for the real-time real -time clock. It has a USB port, which I assume would be for a peripheral device, and then this one that is the one that hooks, so that this is like the host port and this is the client port, where this one becomes the peripheral to your computer, versus this one where you're hooking up another peripheral to your TNC. Uh, over here you've got your CAN bus breakouts, and then over here you've got a bunch of seven different serial outs, which is ridiculous. I guess interfaces, in and out. <laughs> Um, you've got a little power light. You do have the on-off button connected to that on-off pin that we talked about earlier. And yeah, super cool. So this is your whole dev board for it, and it's clearly made by Oshpark. You've got the beautiful purple color, which I'm not sure you can see very well. Um, and those beautiful, that beautiful gold plating and the white silk screen, <laughs> which is so familiar. Um, just to orient you on what I was talking about a second ago with the on-off switch on here. Oh yeah, also provides a power shutoff feature. By connecting a push off push button to the on slash off pin, the 3.3 volt power supply can be completely disabled by holding the button for five seconds and turned back on by a brief button press. If a coin cell is connected to VBAT, TNC 4.0's RTC also continues to keep track of date and time while the power is off. That is so cool! And it can also be overclocked well beyond 600 megahertz. I will not be attempting that today. I will be attempting something much simpler, um, which is this, this benchmarking thing. So I'm going to put this away for a second, but this is where I verified that it does work to install this stuff now, so we won't get stalled out in the middle unless something else untoward happens, which is always very possible, but hopefully won't happen. Um, yeah, so the pre the 3.2 that he sent me to compare with, and let's get this in focus, is pretty busy on the top, but is unpopulated on the bottom in comparison with the 4.0, which has components already on the bottom. So you can't just like mount it flat on a PCB of your own. You would have to, I mean, never mind that it's not really designed for that anyway, no castellated edges or whatever, but if you had aspirations of that, it's not going to be as possible this time around. You've got, in order to cram everything on this board into such a tiny, tiny footprint uh, and have it stay the same, uh, it's understandable that 
things would need to be a little bit denser. And so they are. So let's try it first. I'm going to hook up this TNZ 3.2 to, um, try not to pull on my USB cable because it's acting up today. <laughs> if the camera goes out, it's my bad. But yeah, right now we have this TNZ 3.2 hooked up. And what I'm going to do is open up the Arduino IDE and uh, upload this code that we looked at earlier, which is the RSA signature speed demo, um, which you can download from GitHub. And the link to that is in the description to the video. So it looks at the this header file with the local RSA signature um, assisting functions and whatnot. We've got this variable which stores a known correct signature that was generated on a computer using this command. And then it goes ahead and tries to generate that same signature uh, using a SHA-256 digest and RSA-2048, which is a lot. 2048-bit <laughs> RSA. Um, and then compares the two to make sure that it's actually the same. So down here is your verifying the computed result on line 41 or 2. So this is what I'm going to upload. I won't show you the Arduino application screen because that's a bunch of extra work. But what I will do is I'll show you the serial monitor when that comes up. Um, in fact, I wonder, I forget whether I can have the serial monitor up and have it persist when I upload. I'm going to see if that's possible. Do, 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 do. So here is the serial monitor as is. I'm going to hide that for now. And I'm going to go ahead and try to I'm going to select my board, which is the TNC 3.2 slash 3.1. And this is installed uh, when you run the TNC Duino installer. You don't have to do it through the boards manager. And since this is the first time uploading to this board specifically, I'm going to hit compile with a little check mark. Ooh, Arduino, what are you doing? Why are we not responding? That's not optimal. Oh boy. <laughs> It's being very slow. Fortunately, I got a readout that was pretty good earlier, despite this. I'm going to try closing the serial monitor and doing this again. In the meantime, I'm getting a little bit of a beach ball. So let's close that. OK, OK. Hit compile. It's compiling now. It should go pretty fast. For now, let's see if I can just show you what's going on in that window. It's compiling, as you can see. <laughs> Being pretty slow. Oh, don't fall. Oh, no. Very precarious situation right here. <sighs> Come on. Maybe it takes longer to compile it for the 3.2. In the meantime, let's see if people are saying anything. Mm -mm. Any questions so far? <laughs> Jose says, Mira esa onda. Yeah. Buena onda, no? Come on! <laughs> it's so slow. Stop being slow. Oh, uh, I think Arduino is just not liking me today. What if I close some of these tabs? I've definitely had issues before when I did the previous uh, Arduino tutorial example. I had problems with uh, having too many programs running. And since then, I try and make sure to cut it down as much as possible in advance. But I'm still having a little bit of trouble. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. This looks good. Okay, done compiling. Now in order to upload this, I'm gonna hit upload and I gotta hit the uh, program button to put it in program mode. I want to compile again and error compiling, no! Currently busy with another operation. Ah! <laughs> There's always something. Mm. 
Well, what if I swap it out with the 4.0? I'm going to try it one more time first, though. This is going to end up being something very silly and embarrassing. I swear to you, it just worked. Actually, you know what? It's already uploaded on the other board, which means that... Um, hey, there we go. Now when I open the serial monitor, I'm going to show you that other window. That's not it. Here we go. And hey, look at this. We have RSA signature speed test. Signature computation took 1.309 seconds. And it says that the signature is good. Cool. So remember that, 1.309 seconds, because this is very important. This is one of the key um, benefits of the new board. You're going to be stunned, amazed. Stupefied. Okay, now I'm going to compile this bad boy for the TNC 4.0. I'm going to hit compile. It's going slowly again. <laughs> Why do you do this to me, Arduino? It makes me so sad. Come on. Ooh. Look at the comments again. Yeah. Well, you know what we can do? We can look at the um, audio tutorial kit, the old one. So my guess is that this is the same shield as before, in which case it would have a spot. For, yeah, there is a spot for the mic to be hooked up between the mic and ground lines, uh, which you can see here, uh, here. And it looks like pretty much the same shield, which would make sense if they're pin compatible. Yeah. Um, you've got a volume pin and stuff like that, and this is where your micro SD card goes in with some audio files or whatever you want to be playing. And uh, it appears to be pretty much the same shield, just on this extra breakout for uh, slash dev board for the whole TNZ 4.0. Super cool. In the meantime, let's check on Arduino. It still says it's compiling. Ah! Hey, it's done. Okay, let's try this again. So hit upload, hit the button to put it in program mode. You only have to hit the button the first time you uh, program a new TNC. So the next time I upload something to this board, I shouldn't have to do that. I put this away. I'm going to take us back to our serial monitor in a second. So it's compiling. <sighs> so much stress. <laughs> I mean, if all else fails, I'll just show you the other one that I already compiled and uploaded. We're out of the woods already. We got our 1.309 on the TNC 3.2, uh, running this benchmarking program, which computes the valid uh, SHA and RSA generated hash of a certain file. Oh, no, stop, stop doing this. Uh, why does it hate me so? I don't know. Um, in the meantime, let's take a look at the audio GUI that he's designed for this, because that's also really cool. Ooh, automatic mode has been disabled because the board returned to bootloader mode very quickly. Well, it uploaded, so that's fine. I'm going to take a screenshot of this error message I just got, but all seems to be well. I'm going to show you the serial monitor window again. And this time, this time it will have a different name. Hmm. Here's our sketch. And for some reason, my serial monitor window isn't coming up. Yay! <laughs> Let's try this again. Open serial monitor. I'm not really getting the output window for some reason. What if I hit reset? Maybe that uh, error message actually meant something after all. 
But I'll show you on the uh, other one that's hooked up to the audio system. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, gorgeous. That worked immediately. And how immediately? Well, it took 0 0.085 seconds. Instead of 1.309, it took 0 0.085 seconds. And I'm just going to see how small that is comparatively. 0 0.085 divided by 1.309. That is 0 0.06 uh, of the amount of time it took the other one. What if I say 1 over 0 0.06? It's like 17 times faster, um, which is a lot. <laughs> Super cool. Where is the Teensy 4.0 page again? 4.0. 17 times faster, does that look about right? Yeah, actually, on this, it's about 10 times faster uh, on this chart, and we just got... Well, okay, that's a different demo, but yeah, we just got 17 times faster running this same sketch to generate the hashes uh, on a TNC4 versus a TNC3.2. So it's way faster if you want to do hardware security stuff, if you want to do audio stuff. I personally am looking to use it for uh, audio stuff for like fast Fourier transforms, Fourier, uh, however you say it. Um, other like real-time audio processing stuff, once you hook up a mic to this device, then you can get it um, doing real-time audio processing. So like th you can do extra s speakers out there. Here's this mic connection. Uh, and yeah, even on the 3.2, you could already do that. Do like voice effects and stuff. You can make your own effects pedal for guitars and things. I saw someone hook up a bunch of effects pedals to a lap steel and it sounded amazing and I kind of want to do that with my mandolin now it'd be it'd be so cool anyway so yeah real time proof that this guy is super fast way faster than the 3.2 um in the same package and with a ton of extra features awesome job Paul thank you so much for sending this hour away especially this audio guy I was not expecting that at all this is so cool Oh, I can't wait to do stuff. Um, and check out the audio code generator, audio system design tool for the Teensy Audio Library. It's linked from, pardon me, that page, which is uh, in the left-hand sidebar of this, uh, of pjrc.com. Um, where is it? Here we go. Just scroll down to audio and go to main page. This person, despite us having very similar hair, this person, uh, or three years ago anyway, this person is not me. <laughs> uh, but they seem very cool. And yeah, from that page you can get to this audio design tool. Right here. And basically, yeah, it's drag and drop, sort of like Node Red. And you can see a number of examples of it on that previous documentation that I talked about. Thanks for watching. I hope that you get a chance to explore with the new Teensy 4.0 released just today, fresh off the lines, <laughs> the factory lines. I don't know. Um, yeah, go get you one. Get one of these audio shields. It is a great, great way to uh, work with audio processing and I lost my previous one because I gave it away to someone who had a last minute emergency project so it's very exciting to have one again and I want to experiment with doing like real time audio filters and, and filter pedals and stuff like that. It's going to be so good. So good. Power management, super fast um, operation, all that good stuff. Maybe I'll put some filters on my audio for this, uh, this broadcast. We'll see. Anyway, uh, enjoy. Hack on.